Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Calendar with Droid Life. We've got Android 4.4, KitKat. It's now official. It was announced yesterday by Google. Pushed to AOSP. We've got ROMs available. We flashed one on our Nexus 4. So what we want to do today is just sort of give you a tour of it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in KitKat that's new or has been tweaked slightly. We just want to make sure you're aware of it in case you uh, get an official update on your Nexus 4, 7, or 10. You buy a Galaxy, I'm sorry, you buy a Nexus 5, you flash a ROM on other devices like, say, Galaxy Nexus or S4, or something like that. So, we just want to show you guys some highlights, make sure you guys know everything that's going on out there. So, let's jump through it. Bunch of tips and tricks for uh, Android 4.4 KitKat. So, the first place we're going to start is actually on the lock screen. So, there's not a ton of changes here but there are some tweaks so if you look obviously you've got your unlock button but if you look down here you've actually got an arrow that points up that says basically swipe me up to get to google now now in previous builds up until now it used to be just it used to be just sort of a dotted circle and it really didn't make sense like i don't know who would know to swipe that up unless you just sort of knew that so the arrow sort of asks people to swipe that up and you can do that to get right into Google now. The other thing is you've always been able to swipe from the right and get into your camera but now they're sort of reminding you that you can do that and there's actually a little icon down here, a little camera icon, you can swipe that over and that will get you in there as well. So there's that arrow and there's that camera icon. So that works. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that we've still got lock screen widgets all the lock screen would just have to be enabled. So I'm actually going to go into settings and show you what I mean by that. If we go into security, there is an option right there for enabling widgets. So if we actually disable those and we go back to the lock screen, I'll show you if I swipe, you can't actually add a new screen. You can't do that swipe down like you typically can do when you have lock screen widgets. So if we go back in and uh, go back to security and enable those and we'll show you. Now I can actually swipe over, tap the plus, and go ahead and add, you know, whatever I want. Now let's say I add one. Now I have two, and I want to get rid of one. It's just a long press and remove, or you can rearrange, you know, just like you've done in the past. But just keep in mind that you have to enable them in order to use them. Okay, so that's essentially your lock screen. It hasn't changed a lot, but it did change just a little bit. So let's unlock. All right, so now we're looking at, this is the new Google Home or Google Experience Launcher, if you will. Now, a lot of these AOSP ROMs, they aren't gonna have this baked in, or it's not essentially an AOSP feature. It's probably, it's more than likely, at least my understanding, it's featured on the Nexus 5. And so we've actually pulled the APKs from the Nexus 5 and you can flash them or install them. Actually, you can essentially just install them on any device. So we've done that here. I would suggest doing that just so you get that full 4.4 experience that you'll see sort of with the Nexus 5. We've got APKs at the site if you wanna do that. So with that said, this new launcher is really cool. It's got some new features in it. And uh, let's just whip through some of these. So first thing you'll notice is, uh, well, if we go to the app drawer, this is just apps now. It's no longer an app slash widget drawer. You'll notice up at the top, it no longer says apps and then widgets. It just is apps. So if you had multiple pages, you would just page through them. I just don't really have anything on there. So it's just an app drawer. If you want to access widgets, now it's back to, so we're sort of reverting back to old practice here. It's a long press on a home screen. And now you actually have three options. You have one for wallpapers, one for widgets, and one for settings. So if you want to get into your widgets, you just tap that. And this is where you sort of get your, uh, glossy glazed over sort of buttons for widgets so let's say i want this clock and uh, i can just drag and drop that wherever and that's sort of how you do that now you'll notice i only have one home screen well it says i have two but if i go right you can see there's nothing over there okay and if i go left this is actually how you get to google now so if i swipe back in i've got two screens one here and i've got one over here for Google Now. Okay, you can also do the home screen swipe up and that'll get you into Google Now. Um, but you can just swipe over once you're on your main far left home screen, one more swipe to your left gets you there. It's kind of a cool, quick little shortcut. But let's say you want other home screens, right? So since I don't have any, in order to add one of those, you just need to grab an item and sort of drag it to the edge and that will open up a new home screen for you. And you can resize stuff. So now I have this home screen, there's Google Now, and then I have this second screen over here. If I want to get rid of that, I just get rid of whatever is on it and it actually just disappears. You can see now there's nothing over there. But you can even just grab an app and drag it over and I could grab another app and drag it. Now I've got a whole bunch of home screens. Okay. 
So if you want to zoom out for a second, you can actually scroll through these and look at them and you can even rearrange these if you'd like. So let's say I want this one to be my main home screen. Now that's my main home screen. So if I scroll all the way over here to the right, hit home, takes me back to that first page. So then I can swipe back over to Google now. Now I don't believe there's a way for you to long press and get rid of these. There's no remove button that I've seen. So you just have to rearrange. And then if you want to just get rid of stuff, again, you have to just remove everything that's on there. Uh, I sort of hope Google fixes that so you can get into this screen and maybe remove home screens that way, but so far it doesn't appear to. Then again, this launcher wasn't built for this phone, so maybe it's there on the Nexus 5, just not here. So anyways, if you want to change wallpapers, you got another shortcut down there. You can get into your wallpaper picker and it will show you sort of previews of how they will all look on your display. If you want to choose one from your gallery, you just tap on that pick image button right there and that will take you into this sort of area. Okay. So that's sort of how we uh, pick wallpapers. Again, they've changed it. There's a set button up there. They've changed just the way that sort of looks. The other thing is you can long press and go into settings and sort of some of your Google Now settings. Like if you don't want Google Now to be over there on that far left, you can actually toggle it off right there. You can change some other things there as well. Okay, so that's sort of what we're looking at. Um, the other thing then is you can say, okay, Google, from anywhere now, I'm, I'm sorry, not anywhere. As long as you're on a home screen or you're in Google Now, you can just say, okay, Google, and it will pop up and let you do a voice search. So I wanna make it clear that this is not like the Moto X. Okay, with the Moto X, you can have your phone in a locked state and say the command. I don't really wanna say because my Moto X is sitting right over there, but I can't say, okay, Google, and it won't pop up and do anything. But once I'm unlocked on a home screen, I can say, okay, Google, and then it pops up, okay? So just keep in mind that it's cool and powerful, it's just not quite on the level of the Moto X. But you could say, okay, Google, did the Miami Heat win last night? And they know that they didn't, so that's why I'm searching for that. And there you go. So that's how you pull that stuff up. So you can do voice searches, pretty cool, sort of hands-free, touchless control. Um, I did want to show you one other thing with the lock screen, though, real quick before we get away from it. Let's say you're in Google Music and you're playing a song and then you lock your phone and you want to get to the lock screen to control it or look at it and all that stuff. They've actually changed this a little bit, which is kind of cool. So you've now got full screen album art and this should show up, I believe, if you're watching a movie like say through Chromecast or something like that as well. But what's cool is you can now long press on the pause play button and then you can actually jump ahead in a track or movie or jump back, rewind, fast forward. So it's kind of giving you a little bit more power that you didn't have in the past. Obviously, you can pause or switch tracks stuff, which is kind of a cool thing. You've added some more power to the lock screen that way. All right, so uh, Google Now, again, you swipe over here. The Google Now has actually changed. You can pull to refresh. There's some other ways for it to just continue to learn from you and sort of get smarter. It's probably a video for another day, but Google Now is right there, and it's changed a little bit. There's an updated APK for that, so you might want to grab that. Um, if we look at the notification area, this really hasn't changed. You've still got Google Now. You've got um, email shortcut, or you can see notifications, not just emails. We can see any notification shows up. That hasn't really changed you know, all that much. But one thing, if we go over here to the quick toggles, they've added a location quick toggle. They've also sort of changed some of the look of some of the, uh, the sort of outlines of items when they're not activated, I guess you could say. But if we jump into location, this is actually kind of cool. So Google's trying to tell you to not worry about disabling GPS and disabling Wi-Fi and disabling data and all this to conserve battery. They're trying to do it through location settings. So you can see my mode is on high accuracy, which also means more battery consumption. But if I go ahead and tap that, you can change it to battery saving or device only. There's some different things you can do in there. You can also tell certain apps how much battery you want them to use, which is kind of cool. So Google's saying that you know batteries get drained a lot because of GPS and all of that use and location and all that stuff. So they're trying to get you to start toggling these rather than worrying about just turning off GPS altogether. So it's kind of a cool new thing. And again, you can access that quickly in your quick toggles. There's a shortcut for it right there. Uh, so let's see what else we've got. We've got tap and pay. So they've now factored in this new tap and pay section. You can actually go in here and you should be able to just tap to pay. It should just, although I'm not exactly sure how it's working, I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but there is a tap and pay menu and you should be able to tap and set up your device sort of on the fly. I would imagine you probably need a, a SIM card in there. Again, don't necessarily take my official word on that. 
and the learn more button doesn't work either. But there's going to be, essentially Google's made it easier to do NFC payments where you don't have to care about the carrier blocking you and all that stuff. It's gonna be awesome. We're just, we'll still have to learn more about it, but you'll notice that in the settings anyway and you tap and pay option. Um, there's also sort of a printing option down here so you can set up a whole bunch of cloud printers and things like that just kind of cool. The other thing I want to show you though is this option right here for home. So let's say you have more than one launcher installed. You have like three or four different third-party launchers. You can't ever decide which is your favorite. If you access this, it will list them all out for you. So I could actually switch to the stock launcher that came with this AOSP ROM. You can see it's a little bit different. And then if I actually go back in here to settings and home, I can tap this one and hit home. And now I'm back to this one. So it's kind of a cool little trick that Google's built in. Sort of, it's almost like they're giving a nod to third-party launchers because they know how popular they are, that they're building an option to switch between them into stock Android, which is actually kind of a cool thing. Um, let's show you the dialer real quick. So the dialer now is completely redone. When you pull it up, it'll show you most recent calls. You'll have this little box for your favorites. You can tap on all contacts here to get into contacts. And you know that's pretty much it. Obviously, you can tap on one and it'll try to call. I don't have a SIM in here, so that doesn't work. But you can see if, like, let's say I try to call this one, it doesn't work. It'll swap out and show up up top there. Okay. And to get to your dialer, you just tap this little dialer pad, and you can get in there. Now it's a smart dialer, so I can actually type in the person's actual name using numbers, and it'll pull them up there, which is kind of cool. Um, if you want to get to Let's go back. You can actually tap down here and get over to your history. I sort of wish that was a swipe over there, but it's not. You actually have to tap there to get to your call history. And then you can swipe between all or missed. Then there's another menu over here for importing and adding new contacts and things like that. So they changed the dialer a little bit. It's a lot smarter. One of the other features I wish I could show you, but again, I don't have a SIM in here, is if you receive a call from, say, an unknown number that's not in your contact list, it will actually Google will actually try to find out who that person is and tell you via caller ID. It's really, really cool. All right, so another thing then, if we jump into, let's just jump into the Messenger app. Um, so you actually have emoji built into the stock Google keyboard now. So you have tons and tons and tons of these things. And there's all sorts of different categories. And you can use these in Gmail. You can use them essentially anywhere. They've built it into the Google keyboard. So wherever you're at, you can mess with emoji. All right, so other than that, well, here's multitasking. Multitasking is the same, although on the Nexus 5, it apparently has been really, really revamped. Not revamped, just made even faster and more smooth. So let's uh, jump in though, and we'll show you one last thing. Again, we're still diving into KitKat, so we'll probably have more for you. We'll probably dive deeper into some of these options, but we just want to make sure you have a sort of an overview. But let's go look at that Easter egg, okay? So if we go to the About screen, tap a whole bunch of times on 4.4, you get a giant K for KitKat, and you can long press on that, and it'll spin away. And you get the Android KitKat logo. It says Android 4.4 down there. And then if you long press one more time, this is that sort of mosaic tile Android shout out sort of screen that we've seen in a couple of leaks. And you can actually tap on these and they move around and disappear and you can kind of play with it for a long, long time. Uh, one other thing this shows you is that you can go full screen with your uh, in KitKat, so if you're watching a movie or playing a game, you can go full screen, it'll actually fully hide your notification area and your sort of system navigation buttons. And to access that, it's just a swipe from the edge, and then those uh, actually come back right there. So anyways, just been a quick tutorial of KitKat. Obviously things are gonna be a little bit different on the Nexus 5 or when official builds and stuff like that come out, but this should give you a pretty good idea of how things work. There's how a folder looks, hasn't really changed, but there's just some new menus and stuff. You'll notice a lot of subtle changes all over the place. So anyways, we'll have more later on. Just want to give you guys an overview for now. We're Droid Life, peace.